Welcome back to Divinity Original Sin 2. So in the last episode we managed to get this unidentified object off of... Not even sure who it was. This guy. Forget his name. Anyway. So let's go and identify this. I think... What the hell? From Cursed. Mm, why the hell am I cursed? I have no idea where that came from. Did the ring do that? Brachus Rex's ring. Oh god. What cursed me? I didn't even see that happen. Oh well, I guess I'll keep wearing the ring. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, let's identify this. So, hold on, who has Lawmaster? Lawmaster. Yeah, you do. Okay. So, identify this, and what is it? Ooh. Oh, that's better. It is a strength weapon as well. Awesome. Perfect. Okay, so for some reason it gives us some extra finesse. Not exactly sure why that would be helpful, but I guess some extra finesse couldn't do any harm. <laughs> Oh yeah, so, now that we've done that, I think what I was going to do, I really wonder why he's cursed, and can I get rid of that curse? Oh, Jesus. Take my leave. Keep going. And back here, this statue said they would open a door or something for us. Oh, it won't talk to us anymore. No, nope. okay, I guess we did it ourselves. <laughs> okay, we'll continue on then. So, where... Nope, you can't walk across there. How do we... Can you walk anywhere from up here? Is that useful in any way? Not really. Oh, it says there's a path this... Oh, there is a path this way. What the hell? Ah, so the map will show us where we can go as well. That's pretty cool. I didn't see that before. Okay. Now why would I, other than getting to him, but he's no longer there, because I teleported him to us and killed him. So, what are we going to come up against up here? Oh. So far, nothing. Whoa. Holy moly. Really? Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. Narrator. So the soul jar stands on its plinth, glowing softly. From within, you can always hear the whisper of a voice. Lay my hand on the surface of the jar. You see, or rather feel, a far off land. Frozen breath hangs in the air. Pine needles brush your cheeks, and in your arms you can feel a weight, a body, dead, but you give, but you have hope. Your vision swims, you're older, but perhaps not wiser. You march the head of a shambling host, the enemies of Brachus Rex melting before you. Okay. Um, okay, observe that 
They may have been a necromancer. They did not feel evil, perhaps misguided. No one deserves the fear and pain I felt in that vision. It is brave to try to strike down an evil king, even if you once supported him. I think I might end up forgiving you. Oh, oh God. Um, absorb the soul. Oh, Jesus. Uh, what happens if I absorb the soul? What did that do? That didn't seem to do anything. Okay. Oh, I got another source point from it. Oh, that's cool. It hums with inner source. A purging wand. Unlocks the skill of vampirism. Oh, I'm definitely keeping that. But I don't have any mage, unfortunately. And a book, Insidious Flame. I once again do not have a mage, so I'll leave that there in case I end up ever finding one. Can't believe we managed to come across this amount of treasure. That's freaking awesome. And then a sparkling soul jar. This jar glitters and glows. From within you think you can make out the distant sound of laughter. Oh, I can absorb them all. Holy hell. With a jerk, your mind is pulled to a scene in a tavern. You see a dwarf in the center of a room, joking as a all around roar with laughter. All bar the zombies who are slavishly serving food and drink. The door opens and a tall, beautiful woman stalks into the room. She fl flanked heavily by armed guards. You can't make out her words, but see the fear in the dwarf's eyes. The dwarf mutters a word and the undead lurch toward the intruder, but are cut down like wheat. The dwarf tries to run, pushing her friends, in quotation marks, into the woman's path, but is grabbed before she can escape. As she's dragged away to a tower, you hear her cursing Bracus Rex and his whore. Even when they're thrown, even when she's thrown inside and the door's sealed, you can still hear her shouts. Must have been acting against Bracus Rex from to come at her like that. It's, yeah, I reckon it's kind of to make the dead do many a work than the living. Another necromancer. Oh my god. But her heart was clearly in the right place. I guess they can be forgiven under certain circumstances. I'm going to absorb that soul as well. Well, now I have two source. Can I give him some source, maybe? The jar on the plinth before you seems ancient, but it is surprised, in surprisingly good condition. It's covered in pictograms that you can't understand, but you're sure you just saw one of them move. The pictograms spin to life and you're dragged into a dream. You see the lizards of the ancient empire turning their backs on you, casting you out into the wilderness. As you roam, the human apes turn away from you, all but one. One smiles, one opens his arms, one says he'll take you home. Bracchus Rex. He promises power for a price. He picks off your golden scales one by one, stripping you down to the bone. He promises a crown, but hands you a leash. You try to fight, try to reclaim what's yours, but a woman takes you by the hand and leads you to a tower. He promised he'd take me home, you cry. You are home. She smiles as she seals the door. This is where you belong. 
He just wanted to go home. Yeah. He was brave enough to fight Brachus in the end. He should be forgiven. I'm going to absorb it. Yes. Yes. This is what I'm going to do. Get all the sauce out of... Th Holy shoot. This is a good way of getting sauce. I did not realise that this would give us so much stuff. Holy heck. What a find. Maybe that's why he's so... Not good. This bloody curse. Let's give the Red Prince... The soldier rocks slightly, light flashing from underneath its lid. On its rim you can just barely make out the word Gratiana. As soon as your skin touches the jar's cracked surface, you see a vision of splendor. Silks, fine food, and decadent le lechery. But underneath it all lies bone and blood. The vision shifts. You see burning villages, slaughtered women and children. You see her, purging one in hand, standing amongst it all. You see her throw her head back. You hear her laughter echoing in your skull. A shadow falls across her, and you see a large, weeping face. She reaches out as if to comfort, but Brachus pulls her away. You see her fall into the mire of the swamp, trapped. As you pull your hand away, you can feel a deep, longing sadness in your soul. Is it regret, or just sadness for a life that used to be? She cannot be forgiven. gonna absorb it and get some sauce and seems to be one last one. Oh god you you made it all this way why were you so intent on keeping me out? Tears spring into both of his eyes and roll down his cheeks in steady streams. I'm cursed you know Body Brachus, cursed to protect this vault. I've forgotten how his voice went. He has my, he has my soul in that jar. I can't live here as long as it's inside. What did you do to earn such a punishment? I don't rightly know. This was the Source King's way. Befriend you, then destroy you. I was a fool to expect I'd be an exception. His favour was intoxicating. That's no excuse, but it is the reason. I guess we could help you. Really? You, you would? He drops to his knees before you and grabs onto your feet with both hands, head hanging. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Okay, so I'm guessing that if we smash the jar, they'll be free. Oh, damn it. What do we do? They don't seem to be worth anything when they're empty, anyway. Oh, okay, we can decrypt those ones. Okay, what are those pants like compared to what we have? Um, I might chuck those pants over here. I might chuck those on instead. Give him a little bit more magic armor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not quite as good as you might have thought. 
Let's just see what we should do. The jar before you glows with a blue light. It ap its appearance flickers and changes. It is at once a brightly coloured mottly and then a great deep grey. You hear roaring laughter and shouts, then the hush of silence. You think you can hear quiet, choking sobs from within. Reach out and rest my hand on the jar, of course. With a jerk, your mind is pulled to a beautiful palace court. It's filled with cheers, but you can almost taste the fear in the room. You see a jester prance in the court. He casts illusions, playing to his master's cruelty, but picking on the weakest in the room. He lives for the laughter and applause. The scene spins, a new face, a new fool to make his master laugh. Don't worry, he's told, you'll always have your place. The door closes and you see the illusionist in the dark of this dungeon. He's alone, surrounded by gold and deathly silence. Yeah, it's not as bad as the rest of the people did here. Yeah, I guess that there's no reason he should be given peace. Punish more than enough. He suffered his sin should be forgiven. Ooh. Okay, let's smash this one. What did that do for us? Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> not a lot. Maybe we should have smashed his soul jars, not shot them. Back in um Fort Joy for Withermore. Ah. Oh. Maybe that's what you're supposed to do. Oh well. Well I guess we got a lot of gold and stuff out of it, so that's pretty good. Can you now uh, let us out, please? The deity's head and hands are missing, severed as if by a sword. You can't tell if that was meant to be symbolic somehow or a mere act of vandalism. There's something strange about the statue. Let's look at it over with great care. As you take in its chiseled details, you have a vision. The statue comes to life and embraces you awkwardly with its broken arms. Unable to resist, you're flown away into an endless darkness. Oh god. Really? Ah oh, shit, where are these people? So... Can they come with me? Oh, can't come. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, what the heck do we have going on here then? I have no idea, but I don't like the looks of it. Hello? Anybody here? Well, there's some sort of soul up that way. Alright, it didn't really matter which way you went. What do they want? Laos? That's... That's me, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that's an enigmatic figure in a Mardia. What the heck is going on? There you are, my light. You found me. The amorphous figure takes hold of both your hands and squeezes them. You look, you look so good. How are you doing, darling? I'm Laos. 
What the hell? I'm fine, all things considered. Of course you are. We're taking very good care of each other, aren't we? So how do I look? Within the shimmering of her changing form, the familiar lines of your own face take shape. Ah, uh, whoever you are, you better cut out the charade. <sighs> I thought you were supposed to be fun, Laos. I hadn't expected such a sour attitude. I might have chosen my host differently. A feeling looms inside you. You try to tamp it down, but it's expanding from your belly outwards, down to your toes, up through your hands and into your fingertips. You find yourself reaching for your weapon as a single thought pulses upward in your mind. Wouldn't your eyes look good, ripped out and stuck to the wall? What? <laughs> you feel a sudden, irresistible urge to dig into your eyes with your own hands. Press my hands to my sides. Come now, Laos. Don't you want to play? You don't own me. You're a parasite, nothing more. The figure hisses loudly through its teeth. Why do you want me to why do you want me to hurt you? Listen to me, Laos, and listen well. If you want to stay alive, I don't need you, but I chose you. Because you're strong, because you're receptive, because you have what it takes to reclaim a new life for both of us. Together we can do anything, everything. Now, if I let you stand up, do you promise to behave? What the hell? And spit at the figure's feet. No, remain silent. Answer me! Summon every last bit of my strength and spit at the figure's feet. What a disappointment you are. What? What do you want, you child? How do I get out of this place? Do you really think you're in the position to demand anything? Ah. Uh, okay, I'm here to listen. Good. Listen carefully. This is the Hall of Echoes, a portion of it at least. We're here because there's something you need to know, a great power within you that we need to unlock. You'll need to master this power if you're going to make it off the island, and this you must do. Everyone else on the island is chaff. Toss them away when you're done with them. I have some friends though, I care for them. I care for you, Laos. I am your friend. I know you better than they could ever dream of. Do you think people would still care for you if they knew the real you? I think so. Don't be stupid. I can see it in your face. You know the truth, don't you, my light? But last, there's hope for you. Together we are. We are unstoppable. Look, let me show you. What? Blessed. The figure waves its hand and a great power swells within you. You feel the electric thrum of an unknown magic tingling at your fingertips. What is it I'm feeling? I've taught you a source spell. Something ultimately powerful. Something only people like you, special people, can learn. With my help, you can learn to control it. First, you've got to get off this island at any cost, do you understand me? I have a few more questions. Not now. Escape this place. I know you can do it. We cannot fail, Laos. You and I are unique in all the world. You'll see. I'll show you. The figure lays its hand on your shoulders, looks in your eyes and smiles. Onward, my light. What the hell was that?
What spell did we learn? Bless. 100% chance to set blessed for five turns. Oh, crap. I thought I was like, where did it go? <laughs> huh. I really wish I knew what that did. It doesn't require any source, though. So I don't understand how... Sorcery. Okay. Because if we look at this one, these require a source point to use. Oh crap, I just got rid of... Oh, I was gonna say, I just got rid of my... <laughs> oh! Okay, phew. Um... Okay, I guess we'll end this episode here on that kind of chilling note. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all next time. Bye!